Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the second and final video in IB Physics Topic 1, Measurements and Data, where we will be looking at accuracy and precision, uncertainty, errors and graphing. When collecting data, it can be said to have two properties, accuracy and precision. Accuracy is an indicator of how close the measurements are to the true value. Precision is an indicator of how close the measurements are to each other. This can be visually represented using an archery board, trying to hit a bullseye. In this scenario, arrows near the edge would be considered inaccurate, but near the bullseye would be accurate. Arrows spread all over would be considered imprecise, but in one area would be precise. Therefore, these terms could be used in combination. For example, arrows grouped close together near the edge of the board would be precise but inaccurate. Arrows grouped close together near the centre of the board would be precise and accurate. You can see these terms can be used in several combinations. Imprecision is of particular note, as this is quantitatively communicated as uncertainty. Uncertainty is the variation in a measurement because of imprecision in the device used to measure it. There are two types of uncertainty, absolute uncertainty and percentage uncertainty. Absolute uncertainty is a direct variation in the measurement. This is dependent on the type of device, which can be analog or digital. It is always stated as one sig fig. Let's look at these now. When using analog devices, the absolute uncertainty is plus or minus half the smallest unit. For example, measuring 10 millilitres of water in a graduated cylinder with 2 millilitre increments, the absolute uncertainty would be plus or minus 1 millilitre. This is because we say you can approximate half the way to the next increment. When using digital devices, the absolute uncertainty is plus or minus the smallest unit. For example, measuring 10 grams of a substance on a digital scale with 0.1 gram increments, the absolute uncertainty is plus or minus 0.1 grams. Unlike analog devices, you cannot see between increments. Percentage uncertainty represents the absolute uncertainty as a percentage of the total value that it relates to. It is determined via the formula percentage uncertainty equals absolute uncertainty divided by measurement times by 100. But why are these types of uncertainty important? Well, you need them for your internal assessment, but more broadly, they're useful to calculate variation in measurements that arise during processing of data. Let's take a look at these now. During addition and subtraction of data, the absolute uncertainties of the individual measurements are summated to give the absolute uncertainty of the final value. During averaging, the absolute uncertainties are summated and divided by the number of repeats. During multiplication and division, percentage uncertainties of the individual measurements are summated to give the percentage uncertainty of the final value, which is then converted back to an absolute uncertainty. Let's take a look at an example question. A student of 60 kilograms plus or minus 0.5 goes skydiving with an instructor of 76 kilograms plus or minus 0.5. At maximum velocity, they travel 500 meters plus or minus 20 every 10 seconds plus or minus 1. Part A, what is the mass of the student instructor pair while diving? Part B, what is the average mass of the student instructor pair? Part C, what is the maximum velocity of the student instructor pair while diving? So, for A, we summate the masses to give 136. Since we are adding, the absolute uncertainties are added to give plus or minus 1. Therefore, the final mass is written as 136 plus or minus 1 kilogram. For B, we average the two measurements to give 68. Since we are averaging, the absolute uncertainties are added and divided by 2. Therefore, the final mass is 68 plus or minus 0.5 kilograms. For C, we divide the distance by the time to give 50. Since we are dividing, the percentage uncertainties are summated. So first, the percentage uncertainties for each measurement are calculated using the formula percentage uncertainty equals absolute uncertainty divided by measurement times by 100. Therefore, 
the percentage uncertainty on 500 is 4% and 10 is 10%. Summating them, we get plus or minus 14%. This is then converted back to an absolute uncertainty by rearranging the same formula to give plus or minus 7 meters per second. Therefore, the final velocity is written as 50 plus or minus 7 meters per second. This may seem like a lot of work, but it's necessary to get very accurate and precise answers. It is worth noting no experiment will have perfect accuracy and precision due to the presence of errors. There are two types of errors, systematic errors and random errors. Systematic errors introduce inaccuracy due to incorrect methodology, such as not zeroing a balance. Note these errors do not affect precision. Random errors introduce imprecision and inaccuracy due to unpreventable variations in the recording process, such as sensitivities in equipment. They are accounted for with uncertainties and can be minimized by repeating trials and averaging measurements. You now know how to collect data with minimal error and process it with the correct uncertainty to achieve the most accurate measurements. However, the IB also expects you to be able to graph measurements. Graphing allows information on relationships between two or more variables to be visually communicated. The IB expects you to be able to create two types of graphs, sketched graphs and drawn graphs. A sketched graph is a graph without data points. They have labelled axes, without scales, but a rough trend line to show qualitative trends such as proportionality. A drawn graph is a graph with data points and error bars. They have labelled axes with a scale and an accurate trend line to show quantitative trends from collected data. From a drawn graph, the IB expects you to be able to calculate the slope of the trend line, which is calculated using rise over run, or delta y divided by delta x, the maximum slope of the trend line, which is the slope of the line between the lowest value of the first point and the highest value of the last point, the minimum slope of the trend line, which is the slope between the highest value of the first point and the lowest value of the last point, and the uncertainty of the trend line, which is calculated as plus or minus half the maximum slope minus the minimum slope. Although unlikely to come up in an exam, the IB may ask you to calculate the minimum or maximum x or y intercept of a drawn graph. These can easily be determined from the maximum or minimum slopes. The maximum slope crosses the y-axis at the minimum y-intercept and the x-axis at the maximum x-intercept. The minimum slope crosses the y-axis at the maximum y-intercept and the x-axis at the minimum x-intercept. The uncertainty for each intercept will follow the calculation of a half max-intercept minus min-intercept. You have now covered all of the content you need for accuracy and precision uncertainty, errors, and graphing. We hope you enjoyed the second and final video in our IB Physics Topic 1 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards, and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.